Hello, happy Tuesday. Welcome back to another episode of The Practice. This show is an unrehearsed look into my workflow. I'm Stuart. I'm a 3D artist, illustrator, graphic designer, and your pal. And I'm excited to have you back for another week of creating awesome stuff inside of Cinema 4D. So this week, we're going to be doing a little potted plant scene, a, a low poly set of plants here that's set by a window and has some super dramatic lighting. Um, the modeling process is gonna be fairly simple here. You can see I've started modeling out sort of a room. I'm bullying out a little window here for some dramatic light to fly through. And I've got you know a really simple extrusion here that is gonna be the base for uh, some of the plants that I'm gonna create. And these plants I'm keeping super, super simple. It's a fairly low poly approach. Really just uh, you know using some extrusions, which I've then uh, expanded and can modify a bit. Of course, I use the connect object because oftentimes extrusions aren't connected as they should be uh, when you expand them. And here I'm just adding a bit of rounding uh, to the edges with the bevel deformer, cleaning up some of the geometry a bit. I want um, you know I want a bit of detail, a bit of rounding. But I, I want to keep these models super, super simple. Now, when we're dealing with dramatic lighting, it's really helpful to have a bit of an edge to your objects, right? Um, if, if you have a little bit of a bevel or a little bit of an extra face for the light to catch on, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give you much nicer result. And you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about later when we start lighting this thing. So I'm going to use another deformer on this, just really stacking them up, and that's a simple bend deformer. And the reason I'm doing that instead of actually bending the geometry itself is that way I can take the same bit of base geometry and adjust the bend and have separate but similar leaves uh, showing up in, you know, for, for each of the different you know, leaves and segments of a particular plant. Now, at first, I thought that I was going to use a physical sky object to light this scene. But I wound up going in a slightly different direction. Now, like the, the, the direction I wound up going in is awfully similar to using a sky object and that we're gonna have like a strong infinity light and a sky fill light, but a uh, slightly different approach, a slightly more, uh, I guess, controllable the way I'm doing it here. So you can see using this infinite light and pointing it outside, you know, positioning it outside of this wall and pointing it in through the window and, uh, you know, adjusting the brightness to be pretty high and the shadows to be pretty high and really trying to get very, very dramatic lighting happening. The idea here is that we've got light pouring in through this window and it's really hitting the edges of these plants and, and giving us some really hot highlights and some really dark shadows. And then what we're going to do later in the episode is we're going to animate the position of that light and give us like a sun setting effect, which is really, really cool. I'm, I'm pleased with how it came out. Now you can see we've quickly drawn with the pen tool an additional leaf shape, which I'm going to throw into an extrusion. And then we're going to, we're going to use some bend deformers to bend this bad boy up as well. But first here, we're grabbing some of these cubes and sort of finishing out this section of the room. So you see here, we've got some additional subdivisions that we've added to the extrusion, which is going to give us a nice, smooth, even bend. It's really, it's important if you're gonna be using a bend deformer that you've got sufficient subdivisions in the, in the geometry to allow the piece to bend. If you only have one or two subdivisions, you're, you're not going to get a nice bending effect because there's no points in the geometry to, to actually bend. It's like if your arm didn't have an elbow, it couldn't bend. It would just be one long, solid piece. So we got to add a lot of elbows to this leaf. So we're adding the bend deformer, cranking that up, adjusting the angle and the position, and you can get some nice sort of... Um, some like sort of rotated and uh, interesting effects here. Like the leaf isn't taking on like a, a perfect 90 degree uh, or a perfectly straight bend. Let's say you can add some rotation to the bend, which gives these forms a more organic look and, and really a, a natural kind of plant feel. So you can see the light isn't quite working. I think we've got a position wrong and I think the the leaves maybe are, are casting too many shadows, so we're going to reposition a little bit and 
get things the way we need them. I think actually, yeah, the wall was in the way there. Now we moved that and you can see we're getting that lighting that we want. Now I'm going to add the sky object, which is a really simple luminant gradient that we're adding to the sky. And right, right away I'm seeing a little bit too much of a fill. So I've added some ambient occlusion to bring some of our shadows back, but I'm also going to turn the brightness way down on that sky material. And see now I'm adding a bevel to the edge of that pot, a bevel to the edge of, let's call it the baseboard in the room. And you'll see that when we start rendering this again, we're going to get we're going to get much nicer highlights because we've got some variation in the edges of things to catch additional highlights in. Here I'm going to take a simple cube, subdivide it a bit, kind of break it up and move it around and distort it a bit and create some rocks for the base of this pot. And again, this is all about just creating additional places for this dramatic lighting to bounce off of and, and interact with. Let's see, we're getting there. Another thing that's important to consider when we're dealing with highlights is the specularity of the materials that you're using. Um, the specularity really refers to how the light is going to bounce off of the edges. So I want a fairly, uh, fairly tight and bright specular. And a lot of my work, I just turn the specular straight off because I don't always love the super highlighted um, look. Sometimes it makes it look like kind of cheesy 3D renderings. But uh, in this case, we're going to be using that, that bright highlight to our advantage. And hopefully it doesn't come off as cheesy. I'll let you guys be the judge of that. Let me know in the comments below if you think this is cheesy. What I'm also doing here is making sure that the camera position is optimal. Um, you know, highlights are created by lights bouncing off of the objects and into the, the camera. And so the position is going to affect dramatically the way the highlights read, both the position of the camera and the position of the objects and the angle that the light is hitting them at. And so I'm making those adjustments to make sure that the light is hitting the objects in a way that looks great and creates an interesting composition. Speaking of composition, you can see I'm pushing the, the plant in the pot here sort of off center using the rule of thirds a bit. And then using some simple capsule shapes to create additional interest in the plant. Maybe those are little bits of moss or something like that. Now we're starting to texture things a little bit more. I'm just making copies of the same material, so that way I can keep the specular settings the same for each object. I think I wind up going in and modifying those, um, but you know the plants at least should have similar specularity. The other thing I'm going to go in and do that's really really helpful when we're dealing with this dramatic lighting is add a little bit of subsurface scattering to the plants. Now subsurface scattering when you add it to the luminance channel allows light to penetrate the surface of an object and sort of bounce around in the interior surfaces of that object. And that's the way light works in reality on many, many things, particularly organic things. Like if you look at someone's skin, there's plenty of subsurface scattering go on, going on. It's like why if you ever hold your hand to the end of a flashlight, it sort of turns bright orange and pink and you can see that the, the light actually goes through your flesh and through your skin. Now, if you were to hold a piece of thick steel up to that flashlight, none of the light would penetrate. And that's because most metal has no subsurface scattering abilities, right? But a plant being an organic, uh, being organic matter and not being super thick and dense definitely allows light to penetrate. And to make the, this lighting look a little bit more realistic and a little bit more sophisticated, we're going to add some subsurface scattering to the luminance channel of these leaves. Now, speaking of leaves, I added an additional little plant type in there. Um, you saw that I was modeling that as I was blathering on about subsurface scattering. But I think I ultimately wind up deleting this guy because he, he wasn't really working. And I think you guys should never be afraid to delete something that's not working. You should be, should be a, a carefree artist, but a harsh critic, a harsh editor. And, uh, you know, definitely always feel free to 
you know, explore an idea to follow a notion, but if it's not working, just cut it. And that's what I wound up doing with that little shape. Goodbye. But I did feel that I needed a, another plant. Here we go, adding the subsurface scattering. It's just a little bit, just, you know, 9 or 10%, something like that. I wind up adjusting that, which you'll see as this goes on. Also playing with scale a little bit here, adding some really small sort of mossy elements and rocky elements in the bottom of the pot, which is going to help contrast against the large scale of the, the big leaves. And we also wind up taking that, that larger plant, copying it, making a smaller version, and putting that in the pot as well, because I did think we needed a third plant here. And if you put on shadows and guardian, guardian shading, however you pronounce that, um, you can get a sense as to how your lighting and your specularity is going to work. And you can see what I'm doing here is I'm animating a camera pass. So it's really, it's like a 16 frame animation, super, super simple. But I've gone from a really highlighted position, as you can see here, to a position where it's almost perfectly dark in the room. Right, and I'm testing that movement of light. And what we're going to have is this really great sun setting effect. See, I've copied the plant here. And what's great about the non-destructive modeling by using deformers is that I can then adjust the bend and the angle and the position of these leaves without having to remodel anything. Non-destructive modeling is Fantastic. Use it wherever possible. That's the beauty of those deformers. So you can see here the light is really hitting these plants to a large degree. I had turned off global illumination just to test the renderings a little bit quicker. So you can see with the GI turned back on, there's the beginning and there's the end. We've got a dramatic change in the lighting and that's what I want. And we're going to animate across that over 16 frames and have this gradual shifting progression, which works really nicely. Also adjusting the amount of fill light that we have with the sky object. Because I do want it to be really moody and kind of low light, except for the light that's coming in through the window and really highlighting these plants. And you can see the, the effect of the subsurface scattering, especially on the larger stalks, that where the light hits, you've got a really strong highlight, but then the light sort of dissipates throughout the stem of the plant and has this subtle sort of illuminated quality as the light draws throughout the rest of the geometry. I think it works really, really nicely. And I'm just going through, adjusting little parameters, adjusting lighting, and the color of the sun, and uh, really making sure everything's working here. Now you could achieve a similar result by using the physical sky object and just keyframing the time, which is really, really great because when you adjust the time in the physical sky object, it will automatically change the angle and height of the sun and color of the sun and color of the fill skylight. So that's, that's a really great option as well. I think it's, it's definitely worth exploring. And although I abandoned it at first for the approach I'm taking now, uh, the physical sky object is quite similar to the lighting setup I have now and that it's a globe fill light and a strong uh, infinity light. Um, so I chose to do it by hand, but you could, you could really achieve something similar with the sky object, I think, given enough experimentation. So here I'm just going through and doing some test renderings, making sure that we've got, you know, nice lighting and a nice progression of this you know, movement of light across the model. Of course, I didn't want to render every single frame out before figuring out whether the approach worked or not. So I'm just doing tests here and there. And I've gone ahead and actually, um, I've turned my rendering settings up a bit, but I've turned the size of the rendering down just for these tests, just so I can get, get a quick look at how everything's looking make sure I'm happy with the progress before I go ahead and hit render. Which I'm going to do now. So I'm turning on all frames, I'm setting up a spot to render these two. I'm going to hit render and I killed the recording for a moment and let the whole set of frames render and here we are with the final set of frames. I'm going to compile those in After Effects. I don't frequently use After Effects on this show but I think for what I want to do here it makes a lot of sense. 
So what I'm doing here is I'm setting up a composition with a low frame rate. It's only 16 frames, and I mean that's less than a second, depending on your on your typical. You know, if you're using a typical frame rate of 30 or 24 frames a second, 16 frames is like you know half a second approximately. So I've slowed some of that down a little bit. I've also, when I rendered these, I made sure to include an alpha channel for the window. And what I'm doing here is actually just manually adding sky colors and going for a sort of sunset effect. So you can see here I'm adjusting the opacity of several different colors of just a just flat uh, solids inside of After Effects. And you can see I'm getting sort of a sunset effect as the different colors uh, change their transparency. And then I'm also adding an adjustment layer and doing some stuff that's very similar to what I would do in Photoshop, which is adjusting the curves and the hue and the balance. And then one of the reasons I used After Effects is the, the glow effect, which is a little bit, it operates a little bit differently than any sort of outer glows that you'd have in Photoshop. It really just picks up the highlights of a frame and adds a glow to those, which I think highlights the subsurface scattering and the dramatic lighting in a really, really beautiful way. So you can see it's very subtle. I added just a little bit, but it, it goes a long way in creating this, this sort of dramatic bouncing sunlight effect. You can really, you can see it in the, the subtle like feathering of the light as it hits uh, particularly the, the rim of the potted plant here. So again, making subtle little adjustments to things here and there, but feeling pretty good about how it all looks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to render these frames. I'm going to add a bunch of frames to the overall length of the of the animation and then use some frame blending to shift between those. So instead of a uh, a 16 frame animation, now we've got what like a 65 frame animation, something in there. And After Effects does a really great job of interpolating the midpoints between several frames. So I've used it to really add frames here, but I, I knew I didn't want a video output in the end. I wanted a GIF output. So I rendered all those frames out as retouched frames, then compiled them in Photoshop to create the GIF that you're seeing in front of you now, slowed down to original speed. And it's got this sort of uh, this stop motion quality of kind of uh, stepping slowly through the different frames. Um, really pleased with the lighting on this. Really pleased with the overall effect. I'm, I'm proud of this one. It's a lot of fun. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, if, you, if you like this video, feel free to, to hit subscribe, hit like, share it with a friend, and we'll see you next week.